So while he might have preferred a new medium, there weren't any new mediums to have. That wasn't an option. The only new tyre we had was a hard, and that was going to be quicker than anything that was ahead of him on the track. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia, and today I'm going to be talking to James, answering your questions about the Canadian Grand Prix on this week's ACOTUS Debrief. James, what an incredible weekend. I mean, it's a super special one, especially for me. I am a Canadian, so it's my home race. Talk us through a little bit about what the energy is like at the factory and the team. What, what was it like trackside? I think um, there is an undercurrent of great happiness, obviously, but, but there is just a little bit of floating around on the surface of that buoyancy. Um, there is just, a, oh, you know, that could have been a win. And you can't, you can't put that out of your mind, uh, however hard you try. Um, but but the, the main feeling is just of delight that this was another step forward for the car. The first weekend where we could claim to be nicely competitive and, uh, and, and maybe a bellwether for, for better things to come. Yeah, absolutely. And just on the back of that, actually, how did it feel? Did you also have that holy moly moment when George got the pole position after Q3? Didn't in the moment because I didn't appreciate in the moment that we were on pole. Um, because uh, A, the times were equal, but I didn't see that. What I did was I looked at the telemetry screen to see on our own internal telemetry where whether Max had pipped George's time or not. And in our screen, which doesn't, doesn't register the, the sort of if they're equal, then it's the first one that did it. It had, it had Max on top of George. One of the team teammates said, it's pole, it was, it was set earlier. And then there was the, the flood of happiness from that. Oh, amazing, yeah, because it's who does it first, right? It yeah. doesn't matter, that, that that is incredible. So we've got a question coming in about the front wing. So did the new front wing work as well in Canada as we expected it to? I would say yes. Uh, we, we'd got a, an idea of how it would behave because we'd, we'd run it the previous race in Monaco with just George on that occasion. Had two of them in Montreal and we expected it to perform well. We expected it to deliver a bit more in, in Canada than it did in Monaco because the Canada circuits, although unusual, it's, it's more of a normal circuit than Monaco was. And it, it did, it delivered more performance. It made the car feel uh, easy to drive, uh, well balanced and, and made the car the driver's friend rather than the thing they've been fighting, which has been what, what has been problematic in the opening part of the season for us. I have to clarify, you said that it, although Canada is an unusual track, it is a bit more of a normal track. Can you just expand a little bit more on uh, well, that? Well, I, I, I mean, it's more of a normal track compared with Monaco, which is so unique. You know, the corners in Monaco are are ridiculously tight and very, very slow uh, in in several parts of the track. Um, uh, the, the circuit is much more undulating than many. And, and so it places particular challenges that no other circuit in the calendar places. Canadian circuit, Montreal circuit, is also an unusual track, but far more like the mainstream than, than is Monaco. The Canadian track is unusual because it has a relatively narrow band of speeds for the corners. Most tracks will have some really fast things, some medium things and, and some slow things. And, and Canada is sort of, most of them are all in one speed band, which makes it, makes it slightly different. It, does the W15 still have a narrow operating windows? All of the other cars in that top seven were able to improve on their timings in the Q2, except the W15. I think we have broadened it substantially. I think there's more we still need to do and we'll we'll know i guess for sure when we when we go to the next track uh which barcelona because there there is really very substantial range of cornering conditions there is also a uh, much hotter track and so that will be a you know quite a stern test of a, of a vehicle is that for the temperature of the tires getting in that and in that right range the drivers have a very difficult job to do on an outlap we are not allowed in the garages to heat the tires to higher than 70 degrees but the tires themselves need to be hotter than that when to get the best from them on the lap uh, they have to manage the outlap of the of of the qualifying before their flying lap such that they bring the front tires and the rear tires into their window um, while also respecting the minimum times that the that the that the race director has sort of imposed on them as a 
as a thing and not blocking cars behind them and, and you know, it's very, very difficult out there to, to get the tires in the right place. And it doesn't take much by way of um, being a degree here, cold here or there, to just take the edge off them. And then, and then they launch into the first corners. If, if the car is not as well prepared as it might be, then the tires will just slip a little bit on the surface. That will make them overheat on the surface and, uh, and you lose a bit of grip and then it will just run away from you. I'm not talking about by much, but look at the front end of the grid. Lewis was only you know, the blink of an eye slower than George and, it, and George was on pole and Lewis was seventh. So they're, they're fussy in as much as it's very hard to get the absolute best from them and the gaps between you and your competitors are tiny. So you're punished very heavily for very very small transgressions and i mean i think that pole position time confirms that doesn't it <laughs> now james on to the race then we're looking at loads of different tire strategies that we had at the canadian grand prix but what was the decision to pit lewis and put him on the hard tires when the mediums were clearly looking faster well there's a lot packed into that question uh first of all when the tire when the track gradually dried up and went to wet we didn't put lewis on the hard tire we put him on the medium tire we used up his final fresh set of mediums um, to give him the car on, on the track, on the tire that uh, subsequently was shown to be the quicker tire. The change I think that is in, implicit in the question is not that first change when we went from the wet tire to the dry, but when we stopped behind the safety car to put Lewis onto a fresh set of tires and then we switched him from the medium to the hard. and uh, and that decision uh, to do that was the correct one because Lewis had a completely free stop. He, he was not threatened by anyone from behind. There was a safety car, uh, which meant that he was whatever, at the end of his pit stop, he was gonna be able to close back up on who was ever ahead of him and be in the, in the trail behind the safety car, but he would be on fresh rubber and those ahead of him, other than his teammate, would be on used rubber and it's, absolutely not a question whether a brand new hard would be quicker than a 12 13 lap old i can't remember exactly how many lap old they were medium so while he might have preferred a new medium there weren't any new mediums to have that wasn't an option the only new tire we had was a hard and that was going to be quicker than anything that was ahead of him on the track so that's why he ended up on the hard and uh and and definitely faster than than the McLarens and the and the Red Bull. Why I think probably the more interesting question is why did we fit George with a hard tire when when the track went from wet to dry and fit Lewis with a medium? And I think that is also sort of packed into the the complicated question I was asked at the beginning because it was like why did we fit Lewis on a medium when on a hard when medium was clearly the quickest well the fact that we chose different tires for the two different drivers was because it wasn't clear it absolutely wasn't these things are clear afterwards but not clear beforehand when we ran on the Friday we the grid ran on the Friday with the medium tires almost everybody in the pit lane grained the tire uh, and that when, once the tire grains, it loses its performance very, very quickly and becomes an absolute sitting duck. And the hard tire is more resistant to graining, maybe a little slower, but more resistant to graining. So we fitted George with the hard tire as a hedge against the, the graining. There was a lot of the lap, a lot of the race still to go at that point when, the, when it was going from wet to dry, we fitted him with the hard and Everyone around him was on, on mediums. Had they grained, then he would have just romped through them to an easy win. And, and while that might sound in retrospect fanciful, look what happened to uh, Piastri. His car was going backwards at, at a very, very swift rate. His, his tires did grain. It was right on the cusp of graining or not graining. So we fitted George with the hard because that was his best shot of winning. And then uh, just to sort of spread our bets, we fitted Lewis with the medium. Um, and then later on, of course, there's a safety car. And at that point, the only tires left in the hutch were for George a medium and for Lewis a hard. So they ended up on the reverse of what we'd selected earlier. 
So moving on to pit stops, I mean, we had some pretty incredible pit stops this weekend, 2.2 and 2.4 seconds. I can barely get into my own car in that time. So really impressive to see them working at this rate. It seems like there's everything really coming together for the team. So what kind of improvements have you guys been making to make these pit stops that efficient? Well, it's a pretty full spectrum effort, that is. Um, uh, if we had run last year's equipment into this year, it would have been impossible, no matter how much the guys are trained to get the sort of pit stop times we're doing now. We know that we weren't competitive with our stops last year and so we, we invested a good chunk of effort into, into the fine detail of, of, of the corners of the car such that the, the, the wheel nuts and the wheels can come on and off more quickly and with uh, a wider range of, uh, of sort of application error by, by the gunmen. Um, so big effort from all the people in mechanical design to focus on those tiny details, then make all the bits, then test all the bits in T&D. And then once we've made the sort of leap forward with the, the hardware, then it's over to the, the pit crews who, uh, in addition to building the car before the race weekend, working every hour God sends on it during the race weekend and afterwards, in the tiny slots in between, they are at every opportunity they get wheeling out the car and practicing and getting getting that amount of choreographed coordinated activity which looks it looks beautiful when you see it on on the telly uh, that doesn't happen without just an enormous amount of practice and um, and we're very pleased with the fact that it it's moved forward a fair chunk could there have been potentially a different result without the safety cars well, there were a couple of safety cars in that race. Uh, I'd say the first one helped us. Lewis managed to get past uh, Alonso with a really nice swift stop. We we're just talking about them. Um, so that one helped us. And the second one helped us, so, and, and it helped George as well because um, McLaren made an uncharacteristic error of not bringing Norris in when the first safety car happened and that actually allowed George to take back the place he'd lost to Norris. So the first round of safety cars that definitely was good for both both drivers. The second one was um, more nuanced. At the time it happened George was uh, in third place on the track on hard rubber surrounded by folk on medium rubber. Um, he he just put a wheel wide and lost a place to Norris in, in doing so. However, he was still on a very durable tire at that point and there was still quite a lot of laps left. So there was still time for the, the benefit of him being on the harder rubber to play its part in the remainder of the race. And, and I think he had a very fair chance of, of putting pressure back on Norris and maybe reclaiming that second spot. So the second safety car um, meant that we, we bought him in, put him on fresh rubber, and then he, he got himself back to where he was before the safety car. Um, for Lewis, the second safety car gave him a shot of, of being on fresh rubber to Piastri's old rubber, and he managed to get that place. So I would say, on the whole, the safety cars worked well twice for uh, Lewis, and um, well once for George and sort of neutral slight disadvantage the second time. Do you, do you guys have strategies ready to go if you're gonna if you guess that you're gonna have one safety car or two safety car are they kind of just in your back pocket ready to be played? Uh, we before the race starts we have um, a sort of static calculation of the parts of the race where safety cars might hurt or help but once the race actually gets going the only way to do safety cars is with the live data of the current situation. So there is a little group of people who are perpetually, all the way through the race, every race we go to, fretting about what would we do if there were a safety car now. And, and so we have pre-decided what would happen if a safety car or a virtual safety car were to come out such that if it actually then does, you don't have to sit there scratching your head you just execute what was pre-decided and pre-calculated as being the best option. So James, I'm sure you can agree it was incredible seeing the cars challenging at the front again this weekend. Do you think that the changes made to the W15 will suit the other tracks? 
the changes we've made are definitely making this car a better car and that will that will be true at every circuit we go to i think that montreal was has the characteristics of montreal probably make it look a little quicker than than we have a natural right to to, to command at, at the coming races i think it more likely that we will be competitive but not right at the front uh, because it's just the next tracks are a little bit of a sterner test of a car hot asphalt wider cornering speeds and so on however that said i also know what we've got coming i also know what we're planning to further improve the car and our challenge is just to keep those upgrades arriving uh, at a pace that the others can't keep up with and and in doing that just bullying our car to the front um, by virtue of the effort made by everybody here uh, over the coming weeks and months to get the car so that it can have its Montreal weekend all better at any track that we face in the future.